with my new camera that you can hear me. My next purchase is gonna be a microphone so I don't have to scream so loud. So what we're gonna talk about today are the earliest people of Louisiana, our earliest, earliest people. So people before the Acadians, before the Spanish, before the French, before Americans, these were the first people that were here. Now Louisiana was inhabited by groups of people. We are not the first ones. And we're gonna talk about all of them just a little bit so i make sure that you have your textbook the louisiana journey because you will need it for the remainder of the school year for those of you who do not have it and you're telling me um is my right? why don't they never gave it to me well i can see all the shipments that came to your house so if you don't have it uh you need to let me know send me a k-mail and i will give you the number to call so that you can go ahead and reorder it. I'm not sure if you're gonna have to pay for it. I don't know about any of that, but I do know that there was a number for you to call to get another copy. All right, so in your textbook, first thing we're gonna go to is we are gonna start with page 76 with the paleo period. Now, how many of y'all have ever heard of like the paleo diet, right? That's what I've never been on. My dad just called me the other day and he said, I'm going to start the paleo diet. And I told him that I didn't think it was a very good idea. But anyways, the paleo diet is like where you eat like a caveman. You know, you eat like meat and cheese and milk and eggs and no bread or sugar or anything like that. And it's called the paleo diet because it's supposed to be like it was in paleolithic era. So when we talk about the paleo period of Louisiana, we're talking about those people in Louisiana, like the caveman era. So the one thing I really want you to know about the paleo people is that these, and this is one thing, my pet peeve, they are called Native Americans. Indians come from India, the country, India. Native Americans come from America. So even though your book says Indians, I'm gonna to refer to it as Native Americans because I'm right. And they're wrong. All right, so the paleo people spoke a fully developed language and they believe in the afterlife. Now their language wasn't like yours and mine. It wasn't like Spanish or Greek or Italian or French. It was more or less grunts and things like that. But they did speak a language and they believed in the afterlife. They, um, thought they had fine clothing. Well, their type of fine clothing. Ask me fine clothing, I'm gonna take you to Nordstrom's because that's fine clothing to me. These people find clothing was like beaver, bear, deer, elk, whatever. And the cool thing about these people is that they utilized everything. When they hunted a bear or they hunted an elk, they just didn't stop at the fur. They used the bones. They used the stomach. They used the eyeballs. Eyeballs were a delicacy, y'all. It was the best thing ever. Eyeballs were like bomb diggity. It was like a Cadbury egg. You ever eat a Cadbury egg and you bite into it? and you have all that juicy, sugary stuff. Well, eyeballs have juicy stuff too. It's called the vitreous humor. So eyeballs were a delicacy. They ate everything. So these paleo Native Americans, they had the fine clothing, like I said, of like fur and all those kinds of things. They used tools to hunt, like flint and spears and things like that. And they were nomads. So that meant they went from place to place to place. And they did that to follow their food. When, because they were not hunters and gatherers, because they didn't grow things, they didn't do things like that, they had to follow herds in order to survive. So that's why they were all over. And that's why we find paleo sites all over Louisiana, because they moved from place to place. Okay, next one we're gonna talk about is the archaic people, the archaic period. And that is in page 78. Don't you like this picture? I think this is a mama, I think, and like a little baby. I don't know. I always imagine how horrible it would have been for little babies at this time because I'm like, you know, all about babies. Okay, so in the archaic period, we're just going to talk about just some of those things. Now, the archaic Native Americans, they 
were hunters and gatherers. They were not nomads. So they didn't go all over the place in search of food. They realized that if they stayed in one central location and they built crops and things like that, their survival rate would be better. Because when you are a hunter and a gatherer, you gotta pick up grandma, you gotta pick up your pregnant mama, you gotta pick up your baby brothers, and you have to move all the time. And as you can imagine, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going around this period. So it's really dangerous. So every time you have to move, you lose a lot of people. Well, when you do hunting and gathering and you're situated in one specific area, you don't have that problem because you're not moving the people around. So this is when we see a bigger population explosion. We see more tribes that come out of the archaic period. So that's really what I want you to know about the, these guys. Um, they were, uh, let's see, yeah, that's all I really want you to know about these guys. They practice, I do want you to know this, they practice what is known as maximum forest efficiency. That means that they used everything the land had to offer. Everything. Now that's like I'm telling you before. When they hunted something, they were going to use everything. In Louisiana, we have a lot of mosquitoes. Well, I'm in Texas. We have a lot of crickets right now. They're all over the place. I feel like there's everywhere I turn in crickets. But lots of mosquitoes in Louisiana. So what they would do is when they would hunt and kill an animal, they would scrape the fat off the animal and then they would boil it down and then they would take that fat and rub it all over their bodies because that was to protect them from the diseases of the mosquito. They did that. That was maximum forest efficiency. In fact, your mama probably uses that right now. I know myself. My kids come to me and they say, mama, we're out of toothpaste. Or mama, we're out of shampoo. I'm not going to the store for two more days. So what do I do? I open up the cap, pour some water in it, shake it up, and say, here you go. You got it for two more days. Maximum forest efficiency, right? Right? Come on now, your mamas do that, I know they do. When I say, they tell me, oh, we don't have any toothpaste. I'm like rolling it up, like, here you go. Two more days out of that. Maximum forest efficiency. Same thing, when I drive my car and the light comes on and says low fuel, I'm like, eh, I got another 40 miles for I break down. So that's maximum forest efficiency. All right, we're going on to the Neo period and the poverty point culture. So now I'm on page 80. I'm flying through. All right. For those of you who are new to uh, LACA, welcome. I am probably your nuttiest teacher, so just deal with it. Just go with it. Just go with it. All right. So the Neo, Neo period of page 80. So this is the last prehistoric period of Native American in the time frame of Louisiana. The first one was your Paleo, then your Archaic, and then your Neo. Neo in Latin means new. So this was your newest, oldest form of people. Does that make sense? Because that's what it does. All right, so the Poverty Point culture is, it was discovered in West Carroll Parish near Epps, and it's still, uh, I think Poverty Point, Louisiana is a place where you can go visit. It's a national park. And you can see the mounds and things like that, which is really cool. I've never been, but I've heard it was cool. It's, um, the Poverty Point people were very large people with like over a thousand people, which is massively impressive considering their, you know, survival, the, the age that people were thought to die. You know, like now your, uh, life, ex ex blah, your life expectancy is like 80 or 85 for women and like 80 for men. Well, back then it was like 35 for men and 30, you know, 35 for women and 30 for men. And to have a thousand plus people really means that they were figuring out really a good job on how to survive their survival things. So one of the poverty point cool things that they did is that they really left behind a lot of stuff because they stayed in one spot. So with the poverty point Native Americans, we have lots of artifacts like these spears and they're still you can still find them like people still find these little spears also we have this lovely uh figurine isn't this beautiful and they probably think that this figurine was either a doll for a little kid or some sort of statue so they left stuff behind the poverty point point culture dominated the area of probably like the lower mississippi area okay that kind of lower mississippi valley and the sites, though, are found all around the Gulf Coast. So um, it appears that the people stayed here, but um, eventually, like, you know, most things, they died out. 
Now, in the, in the Neo period, there are several different Native Americans that we are going to discuss, but we're going to do that in class. So now we're going to move on to page 89, historical Indian culture, which is the most interesting stuff. Well, like we said before, in the culture of the Native Americans in Louisiana, they first were nomads, traveling around, going after big game and things like that. But eventually they stayed in one spot and did the hunting and the gathering. Uh, once, you know, uh, okay, they grew three basic crops, corn, beans and squash okay and they also had popcorn so that was their thing they didn't grow you know cabbage or watermelon or things like that those came much later when we start to have the spanish and the french come along so their main staples of diet were corn squash and beans they also hunted they also fished so they did have those things certain cultures and certain tribes of native americans also were in the swamp areas so they had a different kind of varied diet they would have alligator and beaver and a neutral rat and things like that. So it really was along where they were stationed in Louisiana. Okay? Um, they used a farming method called mound farming, and they didn't create like straight rows of crops. Like if you go, I don't know, there's lots of farmland here in Texas, there's like really straight, precise rows. Well, the Native Americans in Louisiana didn't do that. They built on mounds, which is big piles of dirt. Okay, and they did that. Why? Why would they do that rather than dig big, you know, lines? Because we're below sea level, especially in New Orleans. Now I'm from Chalmette. Parish pride. Woo -woo. But anyway, so if you dig a couple of feet, you're going to get water. So these Native Americans, they knew that. So they would do these mounds because that was the easiest way to do that. That's why we bury our dead above ground. We don't do, I mean, in some places they do, but majority of New Orleans, we bury the dead above ground. So we know you dig too far, you're gonna get water. So the Native Americans, they knew that, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going through, all right, their diet. Actually, the Native Americans of this time probably had a healthier diet than we have today. Most everything that we eat contains artificial sweeteners, colors, sugars. All kind of terrible things. You open up anything, anything. Look at the labels on your boxes of cereal. I'm just like shocked. That's why they call it a paleo diet because you're eliminating all that. They probably ate much healthier than we did today. Actually, very, actually very, very much healthier than we did today. They were not healthier than we are because we, they were, they succumbed to many diseases that we don't have to worry about. Everybody in my house right now has a cold. Everybody. You talk about that happening in the archaic Indian times. Oh, I should have said Indian. I'm sorry. I meant Native American. That's going to wipe out a bunch of people. So while their diet was better than ours, their medical knowledge was not. Okay. Um, like I said, we used everything, everything that the Native, everything from everything the animal had. Everything. Okay. They would use the stomach to carry water in. They used the fat for mosquito repellent. They ate the eyeballs. They ate the brain. They ate all the organs. Those were just like delicious. They actually, in the bones of the animal, they would take like a, a spear or a, a stick or something, and they would break open the bones and they dig out the bone marrow, and they just loved that. That was delicious. So they ate all those kinds of things. Um, personal appearance. They were not very large. Uh, men were probably about five and a half feet tall. How about my height? A little bit higher than me. Women were shorter. Men wore breech cloths. Women wore skirts. Um, no tops, either one. Um, <laughs> you know, children wore absolutely nothing at all. You know, they're in Louisiana, so it's never really that cold. I mean, it's cold, but it's never that, that cold. So that's the way they were. Uh, hairstyles were very important. Men and women took a lot of great care in their hair. Women wore long braids. Men had like a bowl cut. You know, if any of you boys, your mama ever put a bowl on your head, you know that's that brown bowl cut. I've done it to each of my children and um, at one point in time. Just, but, you know, that's what that is. Okay, um, they actually, too, they did not, this was is really cool, too. They would use these, like, clam shells, you know, like oyster shells. Have y'all ever been down in Chalmette at the Shell Beach? You know, the, the oyster shells? And they would use it to shave the hair off of their legs and stuff, which was crazy, right? 
you know, the women didn't really start shaving their legs and stuff until the 18th, was it 18th century, 19th century, 18th century. They didn't do it before then. Like Princess Belle, she might have shaved her legs. Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, no way. She didn't shave their legs. But it was in, the whole point of women shaving their legs was brought about by a razor company who started putting ads out saying women should shave their legs. Before then, it was no big deal. But the Native Americans in Louisiana, oh, we were trendsetters over here of shaving your legs. Okay? So uh, by the time the Europeans arrived, uh, Louisiana Native Americans uh, had someone ruling over them. They had a chief or a priestess or something like that. Before then, they kind of worked together. It was like a group setting. Um, they, uh, let's see, where I want to go over just a little bit. Okay, so just, they had a group setting. They had a complex class system. Most tribes had an upper class, a middle class, and a lower class. So they were all working like that. Um, it was different though from the European classes. You could move in between classes. You know, you could uh, be born in the lower class, but move your way all the way up to the, the to upper class. Well, in Europe, you couldn't do that. You know, there was like pretty stagnant. It was just not fluid at all. If you were born in the lower class, you lived and died in the lower class. It never meant any difference whatsoever. It's kind of like I love Jane Austen for some of you girls. I love her books and stuff. And a lot of it, some of the the you know theory has to do with uh, women in the lower class or men in the lower class falling in love with someone from the upper class and you know so much and so on and it was just scandalous. Well, here in Louisiana during the archaic period with our Native Americans, that could happen. It could really happen. Okay, their religion they believed in animism and that was that everything had a spirit or a soul or something like that. There was no such thing as an inanimate object. They believe that every tree had a living soul, every animal had a living soul, every flower was a living soul. They believed in that. Um, their holy people were called shamans, or shamans, depending on how you pronounce it, but that was their holy person. Women, which is really cool here, women had great power over Indian societies. Native American societies. Um, some of them were matriarch matriarchal matriarch matriarchal matriarchal and that's basically where the woman rules it it's the woman who takes care of everything when you see in europe during this time it was the men who did everything it was the men who were king look at king henry the eighth he went through all those wives to get a boy a baby boy well native americans in louisiana they did not do that because women were valued they were given value which was phenomenally uh, modern compared to the times. Um, this is cool here, let me list this one, okay? Extended families were very important. Ancestors were honored and elders were respected. Children were never whipped, but they were punished by other means. So I don't know about y'all, maybe, you know, today's day and age, it's very different, but when I was a little girl, a whipping, a whooping, your mama was coming after you. You better not get a bad grade on a test because your mama was coming after you. All right, crime and punishment. So the Native Americans had strict codes of law. They never, I mean, excuse me, they never had strict codes of law. Like it wasn't like X, Y, Z, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. It was just basically do what's right, kind of that. And if you didn't do what was right, you were punished. Um, you know, thieves were beaten or forced to replace stolen items. Minor crimes were settled by the guilty party, giving the victim a gift. Um, rarely was there the death penalty. I mean, you know, people pretty much did work together and it was a peaceful society. It truly was. When the Europeans came over with Columbus, things started to get a little crazy. But before then, it was just a pretty, you know, decent, peaceful society where everybody had a place, everybody had a job, everybody worked together. And that's how it was. And so when Columbus and when the Europeans started to come over here, a lot of the Native Americans, no, not the Apaches and the Comanches, that's a totally different group, but a lot of them in Louisiana too, the Cato, uh, Tunica Biloxi, the Ushta, all those kinds, they were friendly. So when they see these people coming over here, they were like, hey, what's up? Hi! And so when they came and they tried to take everything, they were kind of like just blown away. They didn't understand. So in today's world, in Louisiana today, we do have four 
uh, Native American in uh, reservations that are recognized even today. And those are the Choctaw, uh, excuse me, the Chitimacha, wait, I'm, I'm, I want to say these correctly, the Chitimacha, the Kushata, the Jina Band of Choctaw, and the Tuna Kabaluxi, and they're still around today. So if you are a Native American and you want to share anything with us, please do. All right, so that's all I've got for chapter four. If you um, want to send anything into the Miss Meyer show, feature drawing, do anything like that, send it in. Next time when we meet, we will be doing a blindfolded baby food taste test by yourself, given by my children. We're going to pick out the baby foods and we're going to have me taste test and tell me what they are, tell you what they are. But if you have a suggestion of something cool you'd like to see on the Miss Meyer show, send it in. I'm willing to do anything within reason. And I don't want to do anything illegal. So I'm not going to do anything illegal. Sorry. So that's all I got for today. See you next time on the Miss Meyer show. Bye. What should the code word be today for this week, girls? What should the code word be? Me. I think it should be. Frito pie? Frito pie? No. Uh, baby pie. Baby pie? Vivian, baby. you like baby pie? Yes. Baby pie? So what's the code word? Lobby lobby. Baby oh, pie. What's the code word, Lou? Baby pie. Baby pie.